You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Sure. Okay, here's some more rifles. None of these seem to be working. And... No! An old Belmagrave rifle. That's rare to find in such good order. Seems to no longer be functional, but still rare. Here, it's yours, officer. You found this place. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby.
thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs, the echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? Wait, really? You should investigate, see if someone's upstairs. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same Slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. Reality is ruthless. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. The rest
like Kuno's dad? Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything. The fuck about it? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. That fucking had one thing majorly wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. Do you remember how he looked? Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. Yeah, cocking boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around talking about cows or some shit? Came around pretending like he cares about cows? Yes, you met him at the gates. The one with the boots and the jolly smile. Yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peeper Kuno's armor. Curious, my liege. Why did Kuno feed you this information? Yes, pray pardon, sire. Better to let it be. I did not mean to make you paranoid. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f Kuno doesn't fucking care. Wandering man, how can I help you now? <laughs> the little boy had the good on his promise to get me into trouble, to sick the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words, not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official Union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So I went to this boy. He said he'd make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, and the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there. And it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. What else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. I guess you won't be collecting them all then. That's less work for you at least. Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I did.
Nice and balanced. Some junior officers can take care of the rest. Smart choice. It's only that one spot you need armor to. The one the bullet hits. Good luck if you go for those boots, though. You'd have an easier time resting the spurs off a boyadero than getting them off him. It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. The Golden Boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a real future, Harry. And I feel I can finally trust you now. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, nothing is off the table. Hear that? You did it the honest way. You got the real signatures, and now he's happy. Well done. I don't know. Your dirty forgery fingers aren't sure if playing this one straight was the right thing to do. We would have preferred trickery, but the choice was yours, sire. As always, you are the liege, and you're in. Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry, word on the street is she's a character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy. The one he described as terrifying. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway, the neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the Pigs. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a Pig. I already have. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, Near the old fish market on the coast, 
The one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. She will be there from 2200 hours till 0200 hours. More fun stuff. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. I did not, Harry. Although I am very, very glad he's dead. Why a war, of course? And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuragi. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1, and that's just Martin A's. With all the unions in Revachol, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. Harry, there is no strike, only war, class war, or, in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait, is that when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. We're not going to give nothing. We're going to take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of it for the people and fuck Wild Pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gourmand go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her asshole. She has no chance. Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. It's already happening. Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The clients will ditch us. Harry, we've thought of everything. Clients would take a well-known multinational conglomerate over a local mobster any day. Sure, some will go, but mark my words. The company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martin A's and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs. Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsuragi. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samarin Isola. You don't need to be colonialist about it. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities. The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad, has bad optics, may be illegal in some countries. The Debardeurs Union, however, we're all about the large volume column. In bulk shipping, large volume column is a major buyer, a shark. We're gonna transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. So your sick kid can get his benefit and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off Risperazole. Benefit is a children's cold medicine, usually apricot flavored. And Risperazole is used to treat severe psychosis. And the kids on the street can get speed and pyrolidon. I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. 
But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the Union took a fantastic share. And I'd keep that stuff far away from Martin A's. He's basically admitting to it. You know why you're such a good detective, Harry. You don't get sidetracked. You care about the people you're supposed to protect, not some systems that may or may not be unethical. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbour's turnover, just like the harbour is, but a small part of Martin A's. Let's look at the big picture. Martin A's as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth and everyone's going to pull their weight. Harry, the length you're willing to go to keep your nose clean is remarkable. You will always have a warm bed in Mr. Clare's household, my friend, and a special place in the future of Martin A's. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martin A's and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open.
Kuno's like Kuno's dad. Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything. So. Uh, fuck. Okay. Kuno's a giver like that, yes? Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. What is this? Trying to be cool with your new asshole? Kuno was just being nice to you. You got fucked bad. Now limp the fuck out of here. After this shit. You better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Just an ordinary war. Nothing to see here. Good. What can I help you with? Hmm. She's not even asking you anything. It's so easy to just say. Of course, detective. 
You can always drop by later, should something come up. Now, what else can I do for you? I love you did. Fast, observantly, like an electronic printer. She is memorizing your badge number. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Yafreta? Oh. Sounds like he has you running errands, Detective. A well-established dominance ritual. Where did he have you deliver it? Ah, oh, yes. I've been meaning to go there. With longing. Clear and simple longing. Strange. Why does she want to go there? A youth center with Edgar Clare's statue on top of it. Go ahead. Help him. Make it so. I have no power to stop him. Yes. I'm sad I'll never have the time, Detective. I've always wanted a dip. She is more defensive about it than usual. Full of ghosts and ancient memories. Has this errand yielded you any... information? Of course, Detective. You can always drop by later, should something come up. Now, more lessons in basic reality. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. What is all of this? The scent, the sound, the air. What world? The only one, I suppose. The world of matter and its pale antipode. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. Great bodies of water, forest-covered surfaces, clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage, we all have. This world is enough. There is a term of endearment they coined for it in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. Elysium. It does. There are those who would call it hell. A term of hatred that originates like many such things with the Mesk Petro fascists. Oh, you want a picture of the world? There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. We used to think it was a sphere, but that is beginning to look less and less likely by the day. You wouldn't know it from the tabloids, but the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. ORG, Occident Revishol Grad. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big three scientific contributors, they're piecing together a dark grey corona. Yes. Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are grey flares and prominences, even arcs above entire isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. A cold fear seeps into you. You seem to be spooked. Please don't be. They say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is, if we are still living on a planet. Or, to speak more plainly, imagine vast swathes of land disrupted by nothingness. I am sorry, dear. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephalopathy. 
Even scientific positivism isn't entirely convinced about what we're dealing with here. But this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut, bring us together, however naive it may sound. I don't know about things of that scale. My expertise lies in nations and trade routes, one or several layers below everything. But yes, we'll be fine. Don't worry. She does not seem convinced that you'll be fine. If anything, she's realizing how deep your condition runs. You may have misimagined it. I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's... it's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very... disco. You'd love it. See? Everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world. However wasted its opportunities. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there, on whatever this all is. Your arms hang down by your sides. The lieutenant observes you both, silently. He adjusts his glasses. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? 